In this video, the required steps for simulating a periodic structure in HFSS is explained by details. At first, please like this video and subscribe to this channel to support me. For this purpose, I select this paper. In this paper, a periodic metasurface consisting of psi nanoparticles is studied. We are going to regenerate figure 5 in which the reflection and transmission coefficients of a metasurface made of spherical psi particles with radius of 65 nanometers and period of 300 nanometers are plotted. Therefore, we create a new project in HFSS and name it as periodic structure. Using modular menu, we put the units on nanometer. Then, from HFSS menu, select Design Properties. Here, we can define the required variables. Note that we defined lambda equal to the largest wavelength in which we want to analyze the purpose periodic structure. Now we should draw the purpose structure. At first step, we should draw a box which specifies the solution space. The cross section of this box should be exactly equal to the unit cell of our periodic structure. Here, we draw a cube. The height of this cube should be as the excitation poles have at least a quarter wavelength distance of the periodic structure surface. So, the dimensions of the cube will be as shown here. By right click on the box in the solid tree, we can change the filling material and its transparency. In the next step, we do a square with radius of R0. According to the paper, this square should be filled by silicon. I explained how to define silicon in optical spectrum in my previous video. So, we select this predefined silicon here. Moreover, I change the color of the sphere to distinguish it. In the next step, we should define boundary conditions. For such a structure in HFSS, we should use master and slave boundary condition. Using FK on the keyboard, we select one of the faces. Then, by right click, Select Assign Boundary and then Master. This page will be opened. We should define a vector exactly parallel to this face. And we can reverse the direction of V vector. Then press OK. In the next step, we should select the opposite face. And using assigned boundary, select a slave. Put master boundary on master one and define a vector parallel to this face. In the next page, by changing the phi and theta, we can change the incident direction. If you purpose 
to have normal incidence, let this variables equal to zero. Then press finish. Do the same for two remaining boundaries. No. To define excitations by F key, select top face. By right click, select assign excitation and then selected port. Define the vector exactly on the side of this face. In the next page, we can specify the number of modes. Press mod calculator and then enter the number of modes which we want to analyze and the frequency. In the next page, using the embed option, we should put the face reference on the structure surface. In the last page, by Selecting the mode, we should specify which mode should be analyzed. At least one mode should be selected. Do the same procedure for the other excitation port. In the next step, we should define an analysis setup. So, do right click and analysis in project tree and then select a solution setup. I have explained the details of setup frequency in my previous videos. Here, I put the solution frequency on 400 trahertz. So, then do right click on setup 1 and select add frequency suite. You can see more about different sleep types in my previous videos. Here, I put sleep types on interpolating. Moreover, you can define a start, a stop and after frequency here. Then, using tick sign, check all the structure is defined properly. No, we can run the simulation. To see the result, do right click on results in project tree. Then, from model solution data port, select rectangular pillar to see reflection 
and transmission coefficient, we should select F11 and F21 in power of 2. And since in the paper, x axis was lambda, I define it here. As it can be seen, the simulation results are similar to those of the paper. To see the excitation modes, you can click on Flocket mode in Project 3. Since we define two modes, in excitation definition, here there are two modes. No, I return to excitation definition and increase the number of modes to four. And I run the simulation again. As it can be seen, in this case, four modes are exist here. I hope you to like this video, please subscribe to this channel, support me.